In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector for Mac, we'd like to show you some initial steps in building your first video project by putting elements on the timeline. This tutorial assumes you've already populated your media room with some of the elements that you need in order to have your first project work out for you. But we'd like to cover a couple other housekeeping things before we start. The default is to have the media room in two segments. I tend to find that I like to have more room, so I'm going to click on this divider and give myself more space. Now I'm working here with the default items that come when it automatically loads. You may find that they work for a while, so you can experiment, but after a while you don't want them to show up. Let me show you, first of all, how to make them go away. We're going to click on the gear in the upper right corner. This gets you into your preferences menu. When I click on that, I'm going to look at the object that says project on the upper left quadrant. When I click on the project area, I'm presented with this screen. There are a couple of very important things on this screen. You notice this one says automatically load sample clips when PowerDirector opens. If that's checked and you don't want them to automatically load, simply uncheck it and they won't load again. You'll have to load your content yourself, but you won't have the sample items there as well. There's also a button above it that says automatically load the last project when PowerDirector opens. If that fits your workflow, just check this box. Whenever it opens, it will also open the last project that you were working on. And you notice also you can change the number of recently used projects that you see in the display and the location and time of the automatic save in CyberLink PowerDirector. And when you're done with the items you wanted to change, you just simply click on OK and you're done. Now I'm going to click on the nine dot icon. It takes me to my library menu. And I'm going to move to small icons. Now I can see all the elements that come as the default examples of video, audio, and graphic files. If you click on the top, you can limit the display. Here I'm only going to see videos. Here I'm going to see only graphic images. And on the music symbol, I only see the music. Sometimes that's very helpful. Now there's some things that you can do when you have audio and it has names that don't mean much to you. You can rename them. I'm going to right click on this one and I'll click on the option that says change alias. So I'm going to change this alias simply to my video 2. And now when I use it, it has a name that means something to me. Oftentimes when you get data off of cameras, it's long, it's complicated, it doesn't tell you what it is. And so this is an easy way to change the name of the file. You haven't changed the original, just the way in which it treats the file name as it works in CyberLink PowerDirector. So the simple way to begin to build a video is to take the files. We're going to start out with the movie files and drag and drop them into the timeline. Now let me tell you a little bit about the timeline. The timeline is the bottom area and you can enlarge or reduce it by hovering the mouse between that and the preview screen and the screen on the left and simply dragging up or down and you can make the timeline larger or smaller. You also can change the width of either any video or audio track on the timeline by hovering the mouse and enlarging or reducing it by dragging up and down. That's a very important thing you want to use in the, in, when working with timelines. You have, the default is to have three separate timelines. You can have up to 99. We'll show you later how to expand on that if you choose to do so. The other thing I'd like to do is figure out where to put things on the timeline. If I, I can drag and drop and let go, and they will drop anywhere I want in my timeline. I can move it to the right or left with the mouse. And if I hover over it, it will show me the start time, the end time, and also, if I hover again, the duration. So this is a 10 second clip, and it shows me where it starts and where it ends in my project. So we're gonna start and we'll put it on the left side. 
Now there's something in Cyberlink called a stacking order. Let me illustrate that. I'm going to click in my graphic files. We'll take this image and I'm going to drag this right now on track number two. Now notice when I look at what I see in my movie, I'm going to play a, a, a little bit of it here and we start playing. We have a skateboarder and then where we see the graphic, the graphic is on top of the video below but it isn't below physically so this stacking order as the default is in PowerDirector is anything on the higher numbered track even though it's below will overlay what's on the track beneath it if you find that non-intuitive let me show you how to change that we're going to go back to the preferences menu and this time we're going to go into the editing options and here we're going to click on the one that says reverse timeline track order one at bottom. I'm going to click on that and then we'll click on OK. And now when I slide up and see what I have here, the action is the same. The picture is still on top of this, but now it's stacked above it. So if this is intuitive better for you than the other way, that's how you reverse that. Many NLE editors use this format rather than the one that PowerDirector comes with. But that's how simple it is to change it. So whichever format you like, you can use. When you have a track that has the image of the video clip, that can hold a video. That can also hold, as you noticed I did here, it can also hold a graphic image. I'll take this and drag it to the same track. It can also hold, I'm going to click on my titles, just drag down the default title for illustration. We'll have a lesson on that. It will also hold a title. So whenever you're working with videos, graphic images, or titles, they all go on this track. When you're dealing with music, we'll go back to the media room, clicking on the top icon, and now I'll click the music. I'll take the music. I can't drag it down to the title track, but I can drag it to an audio track. Now, if the title and the audio track share audio, I can drag it here, but obviously I can't drag it to the icon where I have only a title. So I can put music here if I have a title or a graphic with no music, or I can put it on a separate music track like you saw a moment ago and we can move anything left to right. Now there are things about adding, deleting that we'll get to in the next lesson, but this is a simple way to understand how to drag and drop elements to begin to build your video. Another thing to note is this timeline. You notice when I hover the mouse over the timeline, I have a small arrow pointing to the left, a large arrow pointing to the right. If I hold the mouse down and I drag to the left, it shrinks everything down. I move it to the right it magnifies it so you have the shrink and the magnify here's a very important button it's right here if I want to see everything on every track for my entire video project I click here and it will change the display the magnification to hold everything I have in my video let me show you a reason that's important we can drag left to right by clicking on the gray bar at the bottom. Let's assume I have this My Title. I'm going to drag it way over here. Okay. Now I can be working on a project and forget I have something way over there. It's going to be orphaned. And I wonder why it's not going to edit right or produce right. But if I click on this button, now it shows me everything on every timeline. So I say, oh, this is over here. I don't need that over here. I either don't need it or I need it back in my project somewhere else. So that's a very useful button to use. So I'd like to encourage you to experiment by dragging and dropping uh, some of the sample content or content of your own on the various tracks. And we're going to show you a little bit about how to move it, how to edit it, and how to delete it in CyberLink PowerDirector for the Mac. Music